thing that continued to play over and over and over in those videos. He said, one thing that was common in every one of those things that I watched, he said, and that was they all, every one of those people, spoke of the terrible feeling of being eternally separated from the Creator. He said that was the one thing that all those videos had in common was the fear of being eternally separated from the eternal Creator. From the Creator of the universe. Being separated from God forever. That was the common denominator in all those things. I couldn't imagine being... I couldn't imagine being separated from God the first 24 years of my life. But I was. I don't know how I ever made it. But I did. Only by the mercy of the Lord. And I see now that walking in the light, the true light, not something that's made up thinking that we need to have all these friends and all these people. Hey, be care, be weary if all men think well of you. I used to have a big thing. I had all these friends. I knew everybody. Everybody knew me. I, I first got married to my wife. We anywhere uh, we walked into, she says, "My Lord, is there nobody that you don't know?" And I hadn't been saved a very long time when I met my wife. I knew a lot of people. But I told somebody the other day, I can probably tell you on one hand how many of those individuals that I speak to on a monthly basis, a monthly basis, that I used to run around with, that I used to hang out with. And it's not that I'm not their friends anymore, it's just they want to do something different than what I want to do. They chose to go a different direction than I chose. And does it sad me? Yes, it sad me only because they're continuing to go down that road. And they've not made a decision to turn and come back this way. To be eternally separated from the Creator would be the greatest. I don't even think hell itself would, would even stand up to the, to the fact that you would be eternally separated from God forever. No more love, no more peace to be eternally separated from God. But walking in the light, not a manufactured light by the devil. The, the world, he tries to manufacture the light. It, uh, it tries to manufacture, uh, uh, pick, uh, it's brewed in the Rockies. Amen, it's the coldest on earth. Amen, it, it's the best that we've got to offer. You see the alcohol commercials and you see uh, all these other commercials. I, I even see video game commercials now that are absolutely ridiculous. Hardy's commercials that are ridiculous. I, I, don't, I don't think, uh, you know, playing a video game and, you, and you've got three half-naked women on there, you know, that's coming out strutting across the stage playing on a video game. I, I, they're trying to manufacture. That's not the light, church. That's a manufactured light of the devil trying to draw you away from what the true light really is. And that's loving one another. Amen. And loving God and putting Him first in our lives. Not our own selfish ambitions, but God Himself. Follow the light. The light comes from the Lord. He says He's the Father of heavenly lights. In James 1, 17, He's the opposite of evil. He's the exact opposite of evil. When we put it all together, walking in the light means growing in holiness, maturing in faith as we follow Jesus. As we follow Him. Maturing in faith and growing. And John used the light in a metaphor repeatedly in relation to the Messiah. He, he writes in John 1 and 9 that Jesus is the true light that gives light to every man. First John 1 John 1 7, he says, If we have the light, he 
as he, if we are in the light, as, he said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Amen? And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from our sins. Verse 5, John says that God's very nature is light. I preached about a month ago that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. None. Zero. God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. His very nature is light. Jesus then is what? If God is the, the nature, of the, then Jesus is the conduit. Amen. Jesus is the conduit or the provider of that light to the world. He's the provider of that. Why is He the provider of that light? Because He shows how much God loves you. He, he is he, uh, the cross that, that He the, the, the cross that Jesus went and took upon His back. He, it is the very picture of the way that God loves you unconditionally. Not because you're good, not because you're bad, not because you're pretty, not because you're ugly, not because you've got good, nice things, not because you smell good. Not He loves you exactly for who you are. Jesus shows you that light. The light of love, the light of hope, the light of peace, the light of joy, the light of happiness. Our Christian duty is to live in the light. Now you are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. Ephesians 5.18 or 5.8, I'm sorry. When we walk in the light, we cannot walk in darkness. Sin is left in the shadows as we let our light shine before men. We are the example to our children. I tell you, yesterday uh, I had a, I, I coach a football team and yesterday we, we had a little boy that that broke his arm. And he's a tough little boy. He got tight, he got hit uh, kind of away from the play and he gets up and I see him coming running towards me, Gillis, because he knew I could help him. He was never crying. He had his hand pointed like this. I see his fingers look funny. And when he gets to me, it's a double fracture. It's broke. It comes straight here then it swoops down like this makes a big S seen it before still makes me sick every time but it's things that happen he comes running to me because he knows I can help him and I said just sit down right here and I grabbed his arm and I held his arm and I sat down and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do not knowing where everybody else is at not you know just concentrating on him trying to keep him from freaking out on me because his eyes are this big, he's wide-eyed, he's... And I just start talking, and I said, listen, don't freak out on me. I said, it's a long ways away from your heart, and you're not going to die. I said, you're going to be okay, they can fix it. And he's sitting there looking at me, well, last night, and all this goes on, the ambulance comes out on the field, after they get there, they put him, they load him in the ambulance, they take him off, and everybody's clapping and everything, and... My guys start getting together over here and they start, you know, and they start pumping themselves up. They've exercised a little bit. And I'm thinking, man, are they going to get together and pray for him? And I'm like, and they didn't. And I was like, okay. So I went on about my business. Well, last night I get home and I'm on Facebook flipping through there and there's a picture <laughs> that i never seen. I didn't know they were done. If you look in the picture, you zoom in, you'll see me sitting behind them. I'm on the ground with my back to them. And they're praying for it. Because we're the light. We have to be the example. We have to be the example to a lost and dying world. Or not, they're going to slip off into hell. They're going to be eternally separated from the Creator. And I don't know about you, but that's tough for me to live with. I don't deal with that very easily. The people that I work with, every day I go in there and how can you live your life this way? Why will you not repent? Why will you not give your heart to Jesus this morning? Why will you not surrender all to Him? Why will you continue? Do you know what it will be like to be eternally separated from God? 
Do you have any idea? No, you don't. Because you have the benefit of Him being here with you today in this place. But be the light. We are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. We walk in the light. We cannot walk in darkness. Sin is left in the shadows as we let our light shine before men. It's God's plan for us to become more Christ-like. It's God's plan for us to become more Christ-like. Walking in the light means to consider Jesus as the light in this world, and we walk in that light by following His precepts, living in His power, and growing in grace this morning. Living in His power, His precepts, and growing by His grace every day of our lives. Bill, I want you to get up, I want you to come up here, and I want you to sing that song again, I Surrender All. I want you to stand with me this morning and If you walk in the light, I want you to come up here today. Make a line across this front up here. If you want to walk in the light, if you're if you're saying the Lord today, Lord, I want to walk in the light this morning. I want you to come this morning. If you don't know Jesus this morning as your personal Savior, I'm going to open the doors this morning for you to come and to receive Him today. These altars are always open. And He'll meet you here, I promise. Don't... Don't allow the devil to, to tell you, well, you, you can just sit right here. You really don't need to go. They'll, they'll think you're some awful sinner. Guess what? We're all awful sinners. Amen. Saved by grace. We've surrendered it all to Jesus this morning. I, I hope this morning that you've surrendered it all. Don't keep nothing from Him. Surrender it all to Him this morning. Amen. As He sings this morning, I want you to come. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.